because there are other such altists other than myself cover this show on one of his episodes of a very popular review show called Animator the Trump Cities. His name is the mysterious Mr. Henry. You know, this this one question that he asked very specifically sums up this entire show getting oh my god, two seasons. They gave this show two seasons. But this this guy's one question in particular and it's a question that so many of us ask to this day resonates and is synonymous with this one show. Specifically for this one character who, of all the characters, despite being a doctor, has a cock and balls for a face and he says it, he says it best. Let me, let me give you my best interpretation. Okay. I mean, seriously, that's just, that's about as lightly as I can put it. What's this? For real. Could you, could you? I'm, I'm not even kidding, I'm dead serious. And, yeah. and you know, people, Fleabag Monkey Face, right, was, was, this, was this great children's book series, critically acclaimed. Just as much as the Harry Potter franchise that started two decades before. And this, this, they had to come up with an idea to ruin it. So they made it into a 3D animated series. And these, these animators that were hired to sabotage the book series by turning it into probably one of the worst 3D shows out there, of course, they... As talented as they were, and I'm, and I'm not knocking on them, I'm being completely honest. They made so many careless, easily avoidable mistakes on this show that it's almost as if, if I were in charge of Teleton, and I saw this product at its pilot episode, and I saw that one character with a penis for a face and a pair of balls, I would have said, get rid of this child immediately. Take it to TSN. Take it to freaking TBS. Take it to TBS. Take it to CBS. Take it to ABC. Take it to PBS. I don't give a shit where you put it. Just don't put it on here. Because it ain't flying for me, Buster. Oh my god, I'm, I'm totally legit about this. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. And, and you, you think, this, this reminds me in part of that one Jackie Gleason show that was created by Don Lip and Bob Science called You're in the Picture. What? That what? Without a doubt, the biggest possibility is for you to come up to that point. And I'm just quoting Jackie Lacey, and, and I'm, I'm giving you my best interpretation of it, by the way. You know, because, because I'm a voice actor, that's what I do. Because reasons. Okay. <laughs> Fleabag Monkey Face was probably, and, and still is by some degree, one of the worst 3D animated shows ever. Because of course it was. You know? This, this, this one in particular, you know, I don't, I don't know how the hell this managed to get like some fifty some odd episodes, like fifty six, fifty seven episodes. What in the hell? Right? Yeah. Or just about, I just will say. And, and this, this show got two seasons. That's the most amazing part of it. That's, that's the thing that really shocked me. Right. How in the hell did this show? Get two seasons with 28 episodes of each per season. And how, how the hell did this not get canceled faster than you're in the picture with Jackie Gleason? How the hell did it not get canceled side by scene as soon as it aired? How? I mean, at least Jackie Gleason was honest about his show sucking in, in his second and last episode of You're in the Picture, which by the way, was merely the show not 
Constitution says that an aspiring president and vice president must be natural born American citizens who have lived in this country for at least 14 years or at least 35 years old. Now, Barack Obama meets the latter two criteria but does not meet the first. Meaning, he was not born in the United States, he was born in Kenya. Which makes his entire life, from the day he moved illegally to the United States of America, to the day he dies, and that's including his entire political career and presidency, entirely and absolutely... Legitimate. Amendment 28, also known as the Brett Kavanaugh Amendment. All forms of democracy and all of their extensions of mere indoctrination are hereby abolished in full. Never to be reestablished again. You need to pass this amendment so that for the first time in some 23 decades, we will be able to have a constitutional republic once more to reverse the one and only mistake that Thomas Jefferson made in his life which also surprise surprise 
is the biggest mistake ever made in modern human history. Pass it, ratify it, make it happen. Section number one. All Democratic conspirators in American politics will be charged with treason and conspiracy to overthrow the Constitution and all that it represents and guarantees by way of law. They will not be given due process and will hereafter be fully and entirely stripped of their rights. Section number two. All deep state conspirators in the FBI, CIA, DOJ, and all other related extensions of democracy shall be dissolved completely upon the passing of the cement. They shall furthermore be replaced with a new federal secret service for the people known as the Constitutional Rights Force. Section number three. All these conspirators in the FBI, DOJ, CIA, and all other democratic extensions, including any and all illegal immigrants who passed without arriving through a port of entry, will be stripped of their American citizenship and rights and charged with high treason and multiple attempts to overthrow the Constitution. Section number four, all social media entrepreneurs who have attempted, attempt now, or will attempt to infringe upon the rights given to we, the people, in the First Amendment, intentional or otherwise, will not only be stripped of their business licenses, but also, depending on the severity of their offenses, their rights. Section number five, the rules in the Bill of Rights, Amendments 1 through 10, will be upheld to the highest standards, and this amendment, when passed, will be enforced and upheld equally to prove, once and for all, that all legal American citizens, excluding Democrats, are innocent until proven guilty. Section number six. All news organizations in the mainstream media that attempt or incite or orchestrate the overthrowing of this constitution of which this amendment will be included in, be it through newspapers, television, or cyberspace, are hereby dissolved in their respective entireties and span. Section number seven. All American terrorist groups attempting to overthrow the Constitution will be arrested and indicted by law. They will immediately be stripped thereafter of their respective citizenships, rights, and privileges. They will not be given due process during their trials. Section number eight. All state and federal lotteries that tax the poor and scam the people of their hard-earned funds will be hereby dissolved permanently as said lotteries are a crime against humanity and a scam of the ages. All those enforcing the lotteries will be charged with fraud. Section number nine. All liberal universities and general educational institutions of democratic indoctrination are hereby dissolved. All grade school institutions of democratic indoctrination will be equally and congruently disciplined in the same way as their collegiate counterparts. And finally, section number 10. All officials elected by the people, local, federal, state, and regional, will be asked to sign a contract promising unequivocally to put people and all rights first and politics last. Should they refuse to sign or abide by it, they shall immediately, sight unseen, relinquish their election without question. I'm going to die! Alright, yeah. Now for that segment in Scully Goes Wide where I absolutely shit on liberals and Democrats and politicians in general regardless of political affiliation. There is a video 
from the YouTube channel AOK, -OK, which consists of an animation company known as the Jackal Group, who are undoubtedly one of the most brutally honest, historically accurate animation companies out there without question. You want to know why? I will give you one very abundantly clear example in Caillou the Grown Up goes on a date. You know society's deep in shit when Caillou gets a date and you don't. Because he's a Democrat and you're not. Okay. Let's just, let's get this whole goddamn thing started, okay? Let's just get to the point. Let's get to it. Yes. Here we go. I'm a lawyer. Creepy porn! Caillou has a date. Oh my god. I have big news, Mommy and Daddy! Guess what it is? You're moving out? Oh, yes! Please say you're moving out! No, I'm not moving out! But I am making a move in my romantic life. I have a date! That what? is great news, Caillou! Yeah, I wouldn't call that really great surprising. news at all. Who would go out with you? Somebody exactly. from Tinder, Daddy. Ah, figures. That that makes sense. So We're going sense. out tonight. Her name's Becky, and I think I'm in love, Mommy and Daddy. Oh my God. Okay, okay. This is Michael Avenatti marrying Stormy Daniels. Watch this. Okay, Kai, porn lawyer. do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Of course I do. You may kiss the bride, Caillou. Yahoo! Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you're, good. you're a great kisser, Caillou. God damn! I'm a real good kisser. Yeah, that's the marriage of Avenatti and Daniels. Stormy. Oh, uh, yeah. Daniels. Not Charlie, you love fucking gross. God bless Charlie Daniels. Oh no, I was going to be late for my name date. So Charlie went Stormy. to the restaurant to oh, meet up with his really date. It really is. I feel bad for Charlie. Hey, Lou. I'm Caillou. That's me. That's an interesting name. My mommy and daddy gave me a special name because I'm a special boy, Becky. Red Flags 101. Thanks, Nomi Nanda Bullet. Mm. There aren't a lot of options. Uh, the fish looks good. I don't want to eat fish tonight. Okay. Thank you, Skin then Boy don't. 04. You could try the pasta. I don't want to eat pasta either. Or steak. I want pizza. I don't think they have pizza here. Well, I want it! Okay. I want it! Oh Are you serious? God. Do you always act like this? Do I always act like what, Becky? Um, like a baby. That's no way to talk to your future husband, Becky! Uh, I'm out of here. <clears throat> Don't leave me, Becky! You're a psycho, Kalu. I'm Caillou! After Becky left, Caillou picked up a pizza and brought it home to Mummy and Daddy. How was your date, Caillou? She left before we ordered, Mommy. Did she? Really? Wow. Well, what'd you do to scare her off, Caillou? I didn't do anything. She was mean. I really dodged a bullet, Daddy. Oh, really? You are a petulant jerk who throws temper tantrums. I'm exactly. tired. I'm like especially like tired of listening to this. Pelosi, Diane Feinstein, fucking bed, Elizabeth Warren. No. Tuck Bogan me into honest. bed, Daddy. No. Caillou doesn't like it when Daddy doesn't tuck Take him in. Tuck me into bed, Daddy. Portugal. Do it now. Or what? That's where we're or I'll ready burn to. the house down. Oh okay. Oh, my fucking... Yay! Oh. I never knew a fine time.
Cause it was that easy Not me. Exactly. You know, because nobody. <laughs> oh my God! What the hell is this? This is this really okay for democratic idiot, dumbass, living, breathing abortions? To even conceive? See, see, this is our problem. Too many Democrats conceiving when they shouldn't be conceiving at all. Much less getting a spouse of any kind unless it's someone that's going to scare them straight. I, I can't... What the hell has this world come to when goddamn Caillou as a grown-up gets his own date and I don't? Granted, I actually had a couple of dates in high school once, but they never surfaced. But they wouldn't surface anyway because, well, we know why, don't we? Because all teenagers eventually experiment and fall in love too soon, and then they realize love is not meant for them, at least for the next 30 years in my case. See... Well, I, I guess, hell, love is never going to be the case for me. Because it's not fish love. It's not what so many couples go on the Mari show for, fish love. You know, it's not that. This, this episode of, of AOK's YouTube channel, you know, this should be a very, very, by the way, by the way, by the way, I, I, I've got I've got something that I would love to show you people. I would love to show this to you people, or else I'll go into the fucking grave with absolute regret by not showing you this. So I'm I'm going to show this to you now. I will warn you: this is not for people who are sensitive to anything. That's politically incorrect. This is not for the faint of mind. Listen very carefully. You're going to see this right now. <laughs> I mean, how... What the fuck? <laughs> okay, okay, listen, listen. I cannot be the only one. There's no way that I'm the only one who thinks genuinely that Michael Avenatti looks like a-OK's Caillou the Grown-Up's Even Dumber Twin. Like, how the fuck is that even possible? How? Explain it to me. I'm, I'm, I'm dying for an answer. I'm dying. I'm dying. No, no, seriously though. Because, see, Caillou the Grown-Up, which, as far as I know, has two episodes now. They just released their latest episode of Kaya the Grown-Up just recently, a couple days ago as a matter of fact. But AOK's Caillou is the perfect example of what happens when you put politics over everything else because you're a know-nothing, do-nothing, suck-bag politician who sucks donkey cock all day. And I don't give a cock and shit what you think about that. That is the truth. That is the honest to God truth. And you will not get a kind of truth of this caliber from any other person except for one who doesn't put politics over people, a.k.a. me. Yours truly. Kevin the Skull Anderson. Now, people... I mean, I did... 
just, just look at that. The, the fucking similarities are fucking shocking, aren't they? The baggy eyes, the big nose, the dimples under the chin and fucking lip, the great big ears, the circle head, well, well, well I mean, hell, Michael Avenatti doesn't have a circle head, but his dick isn't circled either, because his eight doesn't equal three. But, yeah, that's, that's a running gag that I'm going to use from now on in future episodes of all of my shows on YouTube. You know, Scully goes wide, reaching out, living the God life, spot the liberal, talking to myself news, fucking savage level mega no. And I'm, I'm secretly thinking about adding a seventh show to my YouTube channel where I do challenges that may result... No, I'm not going to do that. That would be retarded. Because I'm not stupid. I don't... I don't casually attempt suicide in the form of the Kiki Challenge or the Cinnamon Challenge. Well, I did the Cinnamon Challenge once, but I was the first and so far the only person to ever succeed at the Cinnamon Challenge. And I will take that to my grave, thank you very much. Everything else be damned. Okay. Kaye the Grown Up is without a doubt the funniest thing I have seen in a long time. Like, like even, even funnier than, than, <laughs> you know how much funnier you'd have to be to eclipse that moment in, in a Spider-Man 3 video game where you play Spider-Man and you wait too long to shoot your webs from your hands, and then you fall flat on your face. You know, there, there's a clip of that on YouTube, courtesy of WatchMojo.com, who have, who has a YouTube channel now that spanned about 11 or 12 years. But basically, it's just like this. <coughs> I'm going to die! <coughs> That's basically it. I can't even sum it up for you any differently, because you know it to be the truth. And with that said, thank you very, very much for watching this complete clusterfuck of an episode of Scully Goes Wide, and I very, very much look forward to seeing you on the next one. So, if you don't like what I see, why the hell are you watching it? This episode of Scully Goes Wide is brought to you by Common Sense, because you can't have too much of it to go around. Bye-bye.